This is the memorial center at Potachari, surrounded by the 11,000 gravestones erected there by Paddy Ashton when he was UN High Representative to Bosnia. No effort has been spared to commemorate the greatest atrocity in Europe since the Second World War. But is the story true? Marko Gazic was spokesman for the Serbian Information Center throughout the Balkan conflicts, and he has a very different view of what happened. 25 years is an awfully long time, Marco. In general terms, has that passage of time served to unearth a fuller picture of what really took place or merely bury the truth even deeper? The truth about what really happened at Srebrenica is in danger of being buried deeper and probably for the next century. I and mean, what I see here is a waves of accusation, initial wave of anti-Serb accusation uh, revolved around the execution of prisoners of war. But because that in itself didn't constitute the crime that they later decided to tar the Serbs with, that is to say genocide, uh, that led to a second wave of, of if you like, fake atrocity uh, accusation uh, once people were softened up with the first wave. So in the second wave, we had uh, stories we'd never heard earlier, uh, stories about rape, about, about the most bestial kind of atrocities, uh, really stories that belonged more to the Second World War and the concentration camp 150 kilometers away at Jasno, that's where uh, 300,000 Serbs, Jews and Roma were exterminated by the, uh, uh, Croatian, uh, the Nazi Croatian state, which encompassed uh, the Bosnian Muslims as well. So um, that's, uh, that second wave has really muddied the waters completely because the waters are fairly clear. Is it, uh, are we talking here about executional POWs? If so, how many, what do we know about it? What is claimed about it? The second wave is really designed to stop us investigating the first. The persistent claim of seven to 8,000 deaths has in fact never been substantiated. Nowhere near that number of bodies were ever found. Will we ever know, do you think, the true numbers of why and how these people died? Well, um, we are in a difficult situation here because the people who are viewed as legitimate to tell us how many died are the people who have a vested interest in actually exaggerating that uh, part of this story. The Shrevenant is a story we've heard so much about the end of, not the beginning and all the middle, but the end has been vastly exaggerated and it's been outsourced for evidential uh, purposes to an outfit called the International Commission for Missing Persons, which is a law unto itself staffed by uh, Bosnian Muslims uh, and Americans. Effectively, the chairman is always an American, so we're really accepting their say-so about the, number, the casualty figures. What we do know is that uh, 8,000 were initially uh, recorded as missing, 3,000 were found hidden in a place called the Shrapna Finger uh, by the Red Cross. That didn't seem to affect the 8,000 figure, which stayed just as high. So we have um, a, a, a real uh, evidence, or rather we have every indication shows that the figure of total dead is far less based on the population of figures that were in Srebrenica at the time and based on our knowledge, even the, uh, the tribunal itself has found Karadzic and Mladic guilty of 5,100 approximately uh, deaths. But in that figure, it makes no distinction between battlefield casualties and people killed unlawfully. But even the uh, ICTYs, uh, the forensic uh, experts they had for the prosecution, say that the autopsy reports support an execution figure of only around a thousand. Is that right? Well, that is right. And uh, it begs the question, why are we being told a figure eight times higher? And the answer is a kind of inertia, a kind of feeling that the Serbians have been given the black hats and should be made to wear them. Uh, perhaps a desire to appease uh, general Western anti-Muslim policies in the Middle East by offering them uh, the empty sacrifice of the Serbian uh, reputation in the Balkans. So this is really where this uh, inflated figure uh, has come from and is being maintained by. We should recognize that the tribunal was financed by uh, Saudi Arabia and the US in the main. Uh, we know from uh, work done by the Balkan conflicts research team that uh, a document from the CIA has been unearthed, dated February the 1st, 1993. And in that document, it's perfectly obvious that they are talking about the formation of an anti-Serb tribunal, the one to highlight supposed Serb atrocities, but not to talk about Islamist atrocities by the Bosnian Muslims in Bosnia, because that would embarrass the Middle East. So we know that this tribunal was built and conceived with an inbuilt anti-Serbian bias 
from the start, which it has done uh, very well, executed very well. One recent and shocking discovery in 2017, I think it was, was the immunity from public or legal scrutiny, which was granted to the ICMP, which the people, of course, who had the task of providing the evidential basis for the genocide narrative. What, what can you tell us about that agreement? Well, it's actually shocking. I mean, essentially, in 1998, uh, in Bosnia, a law was passed allowing the ICMP to hide its evidence from any external scrutiny, including that of the tribunal itself. And in Croatia, a similar uh, law was passed in 2002. So effectively, why would two of the warring parties in the Yugoslav conflict be passing laws designed to shield the evidence uh, of Serbian innocence or guilt uh, from scrutiny, because surely justice should not only be done, but be seen to be done. And here justice is being uh, denied by being hidden. Uh, the evidence is being hidden. Even the fact that the evidence is being hidden is being hidden. So what we have here is a systematic campaign to produce a result for which the tribunal was formed originally. An anti-Serb uh, equation of Serbs as genocide perpetrators rather than as they were historically genocide victims. One prosecutor, I believe, said in open court that it wasn't only the defence that were being denied material from the ICMP, she hadn't had access to it either. So it does seem to be the case that really there was never any prospect or of any material of probative value being made available. I think that's true. Uh, and the reason is because if the material was made available, it would not suit the purposes of those who formed the tribunal and who guided its uh, verdict uh, orientation uh, in the way that they did. So we were never likely to get the truth from the tribunal. We should understand, as I said, that the tribunal was formed on the basis of American power. It was financed by the Americans. It was essentially an illegal uh, court. It wasn't even a court, a tribunal. The clue is in the name. It was uh, formed by the Security Council, which had no right to form it. Uh, that said, it was told by the Security Council to exist, to stay with existing international law and not improvise, not make its own laws up as it went along, yet that is exactly what this tribunal has been doing. When I listen to Mike Pompeo talk about a kangaroo court in the context of the International Criminal Court, which is established by treaty at The Hague, and then I think about the, the court that the Americans established in The Hague, which is this, this kangaroo court tribunal, it really does make me uh, uh, wince to listen to the Americans complain about kangaroo courts. It does seem, just to finish off the um, issue of the ICMP, that um, in any event, the DNA, although it's useful in identifying people, it is absolutely useless, isn't it, when it comes to telling us how, why, or, or indeed sometimes when victims died. It can't distinguish between legitimate combat casualties and, and people who were executed. So the fact remains, there's a total lack of evidence to substantiate the charge of genocide. Neither the required scale or intention has been established. Is that right? Well, that is true. Uh, and I, I mean, the DNA would be important in terms of numbers, not in terms of cause of death. Uh, but as I say, the DNA results have been hidden from all of us by the body charged with uh, collecting them. Uh, perhaps they were deliberately chosen uh, as a, uh, to be at arm's length from the tribunal so that the tribunal would not be forced to produce the evidence which could uh, find the Serbs uh, innocent or otherwise. So, th so really, it's all part of the same, uh, the same structure of, of creating a thought on the planet, as it were, that's looking to create a precedent here uh, to justify bombing without UN authority, which it would then uh, pass, uh, which would then, it would then use against uh, other countries, which were mainly, in fact, Muslim countries in the Middle East. So the, uh, the Islamic countries got no benefit from, from allowing the Americans to uh, set this precedent at the expense of the Serbs. It would have been better off uh, sticking to international law, which left all such decisions in the hands of the Security Council. Uh, as the appropriate body for that kind of purpose. Now, on August the 10th, uh, famously, the UN ambassador, Madeleine Albright, waved these misleading aerial photographs, charging genocide and threatening military intervention. She promised US satellites were watching. Did any evidence ever emerge from this surveillance? Have we seen anything? We have seen no evidence uh, from Mrs. Albright or her successors of the kind uh, that she indicated would arrive. But I think that her, her appearance uh, with these alleged photos was uh, meant to be of temporary value. 
the whole purpose of uh, of the Srebrenica happening when it did in a situation where uh, the people inside Srebrenica were safe, uh, uh, protected by the UN, they had heavy weapons, their, their whole 28th Bosnian Muslim army division, they had more weapons in Srebrenica than the Serbs around the place had in that period. There was no reason for them to leave Srebrenica. But once the Americans had decided that uh, further north they were going to be uh, helping Croatia uh, ethnically cleanse the Serbs in the Kraina region uh, within a matter of months, it therefore became very important to create a scenario where uh, sympathy would uh, erode from the Serbs before the act to be taken against them. And that is exactly what the purpose of Srebrenica was. So her waving those photos was ready to say, the Serbs are the bad guys, we've got proof, we've got proof. So that when uh, the Americans set about uh, ethnically cleansing 355,000 um, uh, Kraina Serbs from the UN, UN protected area of Croatia, and the region of Bosnia adjacent to it, where my entire family come from, uh, it, they were protected, uh, as it were, by the odium which they'd already heaped upon the Serbs. It wasn't necessary to show photos afterwards. She'd already done her job, as Mrs Albright. I find one of the most curious aspects of this whole genocide myth is that the uh, Muslims were apparently unaware that it had happened for some time after. The people who were commanding uh, the uh, 28th uh, Army going down to Tusla, their officers didn't report any genocide. Um, and uh, it, and Bigovic himself didn't refer to a genocide until four months later. Um, and yet, somehow, the ICTY's chief investigative uh, chap, uh, Ruiz, turns up in Tusla on the 20th of July under instruction to initiate an investigation of possible genocide. Where did that come from? Well, I think it came from Washington. It's per perfectly clear because the, the genocide precedent had been conceived uh, in, uh, uh, by Bill Clinton's team in Washington, and it was essentially uh, necessary for freedom of action for the Americans for the purposes of lift and strike, uh, which they were arguing for then, the power to bomb uh, the region, as it were, without the UN objecting even, uh, that the genocide rap, as it were, be uh, laid against the Serbs. But the fact is, as you say, the fact is that um, the Bosnian Muslims were, uh, they, were in, they were warriors. They were in Srebrenica. They fought from Srebrenica. They did what they were told. They were ordered to kill the, uh, the Serbian civilians around uh, Srebrenica to goad uh, the Serbs into attacking them. It didn't quite work. So they were ordered then finally, when, they need, when the time came, to leave uh, Srebrenica. And that they did as well. Their, their, uh, their leader, Nasser Orich, uh, head of the killing uh, jihadist killing expeditions around uh, Srebrenica, had already left. So he left his soldiers to effectively uh, take a uh, chance their luck in an unnecessary escape from Srebrenica. And I think what the Muslim world uh, needs to know, and the Bosnian Muslims uh, need to admit, is that the warriors, that the soldiers in Srebrenica were just that, these men and boys uh, of the Bosnian Muslim army in Srebrenica, they did not spare the women and children of the Bosnian Serb villages around. They did what they were told. They killed uh, when they were told to kill, even if it was civilians that they were killing. And when they were told to escape from Srebrenica, that's what they did. They were not told to surrender, and they didn't surrender. They fought. Uh, you can call them callous killers, but what you can't call them is cowards. And the Muslim world needs to know they were shahid. They were killed in those battles around Srebrenica to a level that uh, the tribunal doesn't want to uh, investigate or admit. And this is for the purposes of pretending that we were talking about some kind of civilian, uh, civilian uh, Bosnian Muslim a male uh, presence in Srebrenica when everyone knows that we were talking about an army, a jihadist army that had a previous pedigree of murder in the villages around Srebrenica. And of course, it's worth remembering that when the uh, Serbs did enter S Srebrenica, the Mladic separated the women and children and bust them off to safety, which is hardly the sort of thing you'd do if you had a preconceived plan for genocide. This is, this is absolutely true. I mean, as uh, I think Diana Johnston, the writer, said, you don't, uh, you don't commit genocide by, by, by sparing the women and children. And uh, Efrain Zurov of the uh, Simon Wiesenthal Center has, uh, has explained exactly why uh, this is a travesty to talk about a genocide uh, as, as it were the Holocaust and Srebrenica in the same breath because here you have essentially uh, a bloody civil war uh, which uh, and you have 
uh, its finale, as it were, in Srebrenica over a period of several days in uh, July 95, you can't compare that with a systematic uh, plan to murder millions of civilians uh, that was represented by the Holocaust. It's an insult to the Holocaust to try and elevate uh, or to lower the Holocaust to the level of Srebrenica by elevating uh, the events at Srebrenica to the level of the Holocaust. More civilians, uh, uh, the, the civilians who were murdered at Srebrenica uh, that were the Serbian civilians, the villages around it, the peasantry around it who were attacked whenever the forces within Srebrenica could get out from uh, be between the UN patrols. Those are the civilian victims. The uh, soldiers of Srebrenica, the jihadist Bosnian Muslim 28th Division that was found there were the people who were committing those atrocities and uh, any other uh, any other concept is really at odds with the truth. But as you've uh, correctly pointed out, for two to three years before Srebrenica, Oric had been slaughtering thousands of Serbs in these lying villages. So there had been severe provocation. So it would seem uh, inevitable that some of the deaths that did occur would have understandably actually have been motivated by revenge. That revenge would have been uh, uh, very much in the minds of the local Serbs who've been watching uh, over the years as these uh, uh, Bosnian Muslim 28th Division um, forces came out of Srebrenica and massacred wherever they could. So yes, uh, revenge was a danger. And indeed, the um, head of UN forces in uh, the area, General Morion, said that he felt that this was a possibility if the situation wasn't managed very carefully. Uh, but of course, there was no interest in managing the situation carefully. Uh, in fact, the uh, aim was for uh, a massacre of thousands to occur. That was the American aim, according to a Bosnian Muslim uh, official in uh, Srebrenica at the time, who uh, describes how uh, he was told by Alijeda Begovic, then president of Bosnia, that Clinton had told him personally that 5,000 dead Muslims were required in order to give the US uh, an excuse to go in. Let's look forward now, and I'd like to ask you which areas of academic research you think are most promising in the cause of advancing historical accuracy? Uh, I think the problem for academia is that it's trapped in a kind of... Um, feeling that it has to obey the politically correct orientation of the moment. Uh, academics rely for their, for their very existence on the goodwill of, their, uh, of those who pay them. And uh, these days, in the days of social media, are very vulnerable to the lack of goodwill of those who might oppose them. So uh, I think I'm a bit worried for academia because it hasn't got the freedom to do this kind of research, to investigate this properly and to come out with a view that might contradict the received wisdom. Because should it do so, it will be attacked by a combination of American uh, CIA uh, intelligence trolls operating through social media or the 77th Brigade that we've got here in the UK. It will be attacked immediately for, uh, for any, um, any dissenting views. And so I, I, I fear that academia will not yet be able to help us come to a solution to this. I think it needs really information uh, from the people in the Balkans. I think the Muslims themselves, the Bosnian Muslims really should understand that the road to reconciliation does not lead through demonization. If they want to have any kind of relationship with the Bosnian Serbs, then they shouldn't be accusing them of being the worst, uh, worst neighbors since Hitler. Uh, I think well, that isn't the way to go if we want uh, that region to be stable. Of course, if we want that region to be unstable, like some elements in Washington do, then it's absolutely fine for this um, war of words and war of propaganda and war of images to continue at the expense of one of the sides. Depressingly, you seem to be suggesting, Marco, that a, a fabricated version of history, unsubstantiated by facts on the ground, can actually endure. I think it can endure for uh, approximately a hundred years until all the people who um, who have been really involved in keep creating those impressions have died off, uh, and until the documents which are even now under lock and key at the Security Council regarding Srebrenica uh, are released, so we hear more. Until also we uh, get beyond the uh, fabrications of the International Commission, so-called, of for missing persons, and when uh, if we manage to get this whole issue uh, appraised by a legitimate uh, investigation, for example, one that could be done by the UN uh, uh, Commission for Human Rights, as it were, if we have a, uh, if we understand that what has happened here has been a travesty of justice based on a 
fake trial with fake evidence, fake witnesses, fake propositions throughout this uh, International Criminal, Tri Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, otherwise known as the Hague Tribunal, is a purveyor of fake news par excellence. As such, it only lends uh, the region instability and dissent and future blood and future generations. We need an honest inquiry, not one financed by the US and Saudi Arabia. To what extent were the Serbs opposed to the Muslims on the basis of faith? Um, it's true that the Bosnia had a, a difficult history on the basis of faith divisions, but what is also true is that come the, the war of the 90s, uh, the, Serb, the Bosnian Serbs uh, and the most popular Bosnian Muslim leader, Fikret Abdic, uh, were actually in alliance throughout the war of the 90s, and most people don't know this. So the Bosnian Muslims were actually divided into two camps, one around Begovic, who was the Islamist, who said there was no peace and coexistence between the Islamic uh, and non-Islamic institutions, and the other Bosnian Muslim leader was uh, a guy called Fikret Abdic, who was uh, uh, in northwest Bosnia around Bihać, and his view was coexistence was entirely possible and should be encouraged, and he and the uh, Bosnian Serbs, his forces, his Bosnian Muslim forces, and the Bosnian Serbs were in alliance throughout the war, and the same ethnic cleansing operation done uh, by, in the following months, by uh, the Croatian troops with, Bos with his Abegovic uh, support and US logistics, the same uh, ethnic cleansing operation that got rid of 355,000 uh, Serbs from the region also eliminated all of Fikret Abdic's uh, population, as it were, at the same time. One final point, Marco, and can you sum up for us why it is so important to set this record straight? Internally, as I said uh, uh, a moment ago, it's important for the peoples who live in the Balkans that uh, the record is uh, set straight and that they understand exactly what uh, uh, each other are guilty of. So it's, it's important for local stability, but it's more important for world stability because the whole proposition here is that uh, the, the alleged events at Srebrenica were, were allowed to happen and therefore uh, the US is claiming the right to stop any such possible events elsewhere as decreed as decree by itself. From happening. So effectively, Srebrenica is giving the US a moral mandate to bomb whenever it likes, where it likes, just by accusing uh, the bombing victim of being genocidal. So we need uh, the US to be put back in its box and to be subject to international law like the rest of the world community. And for that to happen, the lies around Srebrenica, the uh, exaggeration around the Srebrenica story, and the beginning and the middle of the Srebrenica story all need to come out in order for a fair description of what was a bloody civil war and no more and no less to come out the world will be a safer place when we understand that. Marco thank you very much you remind me of what Bill Clinton said about the um, indictment of Milosevic that it confirms that our war is just that does seem to indeed have been the whole point and purpose of the tribunal and all the rest of it thank you very much. <laughs>